energy is essential to life. For hundreds of years, energy has continued to evolve to meet the needs of humanity. And as the population continues to increase, billions of people still suffer from energy scarcity. How can we balance the use of all available energy sources to maintain and advance the standard of living for people worldwide, while at the same time limiting environmental impacts? Today, we are going to look at one of the driving forces of globalization, energy. It's been called the missing link of globalization. Energy is also one of the major driving forces in quality of life for people around the world. Clean water, food availability, shelter security, transportation, technology, medicines, sanitation, clothing, and power are all linked to access to energy. But access to reliable energy is not equal in the world. Did you know that much of the world lives in energy scarcity? Almost 1 billion people have no access to electricity. Approximately 2.6 billion people do not have access to clean fuels, relying on burning wood, coal, or dung for cooking. Canada's standard of living is high thanks to access to abundant, affordable energy. Many Canadians are large consumers of energy, with per capita consumption of five times the world average, driven by the cold climate and large landmass. Imagine how different your life would be if you lived with energy scarcity. So, how did we get here? The evolution of human society has been driven by the evolution of energy, ever larger amounts of energy to boost our quality of life. Anthropologist Leslie White called it the first law of cultural development. The degree of cultural development varies directly as the amount of energy per capita per year harnessed and put to work. For millions of years, life was only powered by nuclear energy. The sun, a giant ball of never-ending nuclear fusion that provides the thermal energy for photosynthesis in plants, the foundation of all life. Everything changed with the invention of steam engines. And when James Watt made it far more efficient in 1776, globalization received a jump start. The combination of coal and the steam engine drove the first industrial revolution from 1760 to 1830. How important was energy? Economist Emile Levasseur noted that one steam horsepower could perform the work of 21 laborers. So, the capacity of installed steam engines in France in 1840 had the capacity of one million laborers. By 1880, this capacity had increased to 98 million laborers. It drove manufacturing, transportation, agriculture, urbanization, and trade. And this in turn drove globalization, increasing interaction between different parts of the world in two important ways. The ability to travel further and faster, transporting a greater amount of goods, drove trade between nations and continents. And the need for energy sources to drive society drove interconnections between countries that had valuable resources like coal and those that did not. The second industrial revolution between 1870 and 1914 was driven by electricity and petroleum. In order to meet the rising energy demand driven by population, the sources of energy continued to evolve. Hydropower expanded the energy mix in the early 1900s, followed by nuclear power in the 1960s, and renewables like geothermal, solar, and wind power in the 1980s. So what are the major sources in our energy ecosystem today? And where is it going? That depends on where you are. Every nation relies on a different mix of energy to support their society. The global energy ecosystem, the sources of energy in conjunction with end users, continues to evolve to meet growing energy demand. So what's the ideal energy mix? Each energy source plays a role in meeting the world's energy needs. And each energy source has advantages and disadvantages around factors like availability, reliability, cost, environmental impact on air, water, wildlife, and land use. These factors even depend on what part of the world you are in. 
when choosing which types of energy to use, countries balance these factors with economic needs. Let's examine 10 different energy sources in Canada, starting with hydrocarbons, a group of energy sources that were formed when ancient plants and organisms were subject to intense heat and pressure over millions of years. Coal, oil, and natural gas are all considered to be hydrocarbons. Coal is abundant, inexpensive, and reliable, making it one of the world's primary energy sources. And it is vital for the production of steel that is used in many things we rely on, like buildings, bridges, and cars. On the other hand, burning coal creates carbon emissions, and there are environmental issues around mining. Oil is the primary source of energy for the world today. It is used in transportation to fuel cars and planes, in power generation, and in the production of materials used in many everyday products, such as electronics. However, using oil creates carbon emissions and requires safe transportation. Natural gas provides communities with electricity, heating and cooking, and is used to make fertilizers and plastics. While it is the cleanest burning hydrocarbon, with half the emissions of coal, it still emits carbon and needs safe handling. Dams are used to store water that is then released to spin turbines that create electricity. While hydropower is renewable and reliable, the creation of dams can harm the environment and the production of cement for dams emits carbon. Ocean currents or tides spin turbines to generate power in areas with high tide fluctuations. While renewable, sustainable, and predictable, it is expensive and can harm marine wildlife. Nuclear power plants produce energy through fission, where heat, released by splitting uranium atoms, boils water to make steam, which turns turbines to produce electricity. While nuclear energy emits little carbon, nuclear waste is highly toxic. Geothermal energy comes from heat beneath the Earth's surface. Water or steam is used for heating and generating electricity. While considered renewable, it is costly and only available in limited areas. Biomass energy is energy harvested from biological sources, like ethanol fuel from corn, methane from garbage, or heat from burning wood chips. While considered renewable and widely available, both the type of feedstock and how it is developed can lead to deforestation, and biofuels emit carbon. Solar panels capture light from the sun, converting the solar energy into electrical energy. Solar energy is renewable and low carbon, but environmental impacts include land use and the mining of rare earth metals. The wind spins giant steel turbines that convert the kinetic energy into electricity. While wind energy is renewable and sustainable, it can only produce energy when it's windy, and environmental impacts include land use and challenges to wildlife. Evolving for the future, your role in the next energy revolution. Your challenge. How do we evolve our energy ecosystem to meet the world's growing need for reliable and affordable energy while at the same time protecting the environment? Energy sources continue to evolve. Advances in battery and storage technology can make wind and solar more feasible. Advances in technology and carbon capture can help reduce the environmental impact of hydrocarbons. Advances in biofuel production can lower impact and become carbon neutral. Sources of energy like hydrogen fuel cells can be advanced or new energy sources discovered. And advances in energy efficiency will alter the equation as well. However, the world's population is expected to grow by 2 billion people by 2050. That's almost 10 billion people in total. It's also projected that energy consumption will increase by almost 50% in that same time period. It is a complex problem. There's no single solution to all of our energy requirements, so it's going to mean balancing all of these energy sources together to meet the world demand while at the same time protecting the environment. Finding solutions will mean exploring questions like, how can we balance access to energy to advance quality of life while protecting the environment? What 
kinds of future technology and innovations could impact energy use and environmental protection? And finally, how will you shape the future of our energy ecosystem?